the Nothing Phone 2 after about a month of usage and a software update. I want to talk about where this device falls in the marketplace, especially in relation to the OnePlus 11, because I see a lot of people dismissing this device just because the OnePlus 11 exists at around the same price point, and I do think that's a mistake. There's a lot that the Nothing Phone 2 offers that you don't necessarily get on the OnePlus 11, and the overall experience for me, pound for pound, is a little bit better on the Nothing Phone 2, which we'll talk about. But before I do all that, I want to talk about today's video partner, Mint Mobile. If you're tired of paying too much for your cell service, then Mint Mobile has a solution for you, especially now with their best plan, their unlimited plan, running at 50% off, 15 bucks a month, get you great 5G speeds and coverage. So use the link in the description or the QR code that you see on screen and get started today. If you have an older device, they could send a SIM card out to you. If you have a newer device, give them a call, speak to a live human being and get set up with an eSIM. You could get set up in as little as 15 minutes, so there's no excuse to not switch over and start saving money today. Use the link in the description. Does directly help the channel, but thanks again to today's video partner, Mint Mobile. Thanks again to today's video partner, Mint Mobile. Do use that link in the description. Does directly help the channel. You can save some money on some great 5G service. So, the Nothing Phone 2, $599. And I know that's an odd price point because the OnePlus 11 is right there right now. You get the upgraded Gen 2 for the Snapdragon 8 in the OnePlus 11. I get all that. You get the Quad HD display. I get that. But for me, overall, I like the Nothing Phone 2 a touch better. And I could see a case for either one. I'm not saying you shouldn't like your OnePlus 11. I love what they did with the OnePlus 11. I'm just saying I could see a case for both phones, and that to me is a departure from the arguments I've seen so far on YouTube and on Twitter about this device. Everyone's saying, oh, no, no brainer, should get the OnePlus 11. I personally don't agree with that. So let's talk about what you get with the Nothing Phone 2 for your 599. Number one is the build quality. Absolutely love it. I love the metal, love the glass, love the construction, love the fact that I can have a five point, or sorry, 6.7 inch display, which a lot of people says is a deal breaker for them. They need that big display on a device. I love that I can have a 6.7 inch display on a device that doesn't weigh 240 grams. You know, this is a nice light phone to carry around. It's great. It's not too top heavy or anything like that when you're holding it one handed. I love the use of it. And sometimes it's a, unlike a lot of the flagships of today, you could forget this guy is in your pocket at any given time. Let's talk about that display because it is fantastic. I don't know how it's, if, whether it's how they laminate it, whatever it is, it feels like you're touching your content. I love the way that everything jumps off the display. Colors are good. Saturation is great. Brightness is fantastic. You have no problems on a sunny day with this device outside. Like I said, 6.7 inches. You are limited by that 1080p. It is something that elsewhere in this price range you're going to have issue with. I personally feel like it's plenty good for me. Even at 1080p and you are getting the 120 hertz, so you're not getting anything as far as a degradation there. So I like it. But overall, I said the display is a fantastic, fantastic, fantastic experience just because of how quality the OLED is. Camera is one thing that they're really trying to sell on this device. Now, I, I know I know they said, well, we're, we're rivaling uh, Apple and Samsung now. Why? Well, let's, <laughs> let, let's hold off on that a little bit, okay? Because I don't think that's the case. We'll throw up some shots here. Normally, I don't go over camera this early in a follow-up review, but I do feel it's important here because they are emphasizing it. They're doing a lot of work with it. We're going, to, we look at the, we're going to look at the change log or the update log in a moment. There's a lot in there about the camera. And they do a good job. You know, at $599, I think it's better than the OnePlus 11 photos. I just don't think the OnePlus photos have that depth or that color or that clarity that the Nothing Phone 2 photos have. But is it on the Pixel iPhone Galaxy level? No, I don't believe it is, but you're paying less. So I don't think it has to be. So I think in this category, especially you're going up Moto, you're going up against OnePlus, those devices in that six, seven hundred dollar range, I do think it beats the competition outside of a Pixel. But there's a lot of other Pixel things that you're going to have to deal with on that side that you really don't have to deal with over here on the Nothing Phone 2. So I think they've done a good job with the camera. They've updated it. I like the photos, but it's just not quite at the quality that they're talking about. But it doesn't have to be for my money at $599. Let's talk about Nothing OS. I'll talk about the updates in a moment. I really like it. You know, if you're looking for a relatively stock version of Android, a, I should say a clean version of Android, 
nothing OS has really done that. There were a couple performance things or kind of weird glitches early on. The first update I got solved it. It has been a silky smooth experience. I have not noticed it. And it, what's great about it is it's like, you know, they tell a journalist, don't be part of the story. That's to me what a good, clean version of Android should be like if you're not trying to be overly fancy like a One UI 5.1 or something like that. Make it clean, make it work well, not have a lot of glitches. Do you have a couple quirks in here? Yeah, absolutely. Do you have the glyph interface that you can mess with if you want to? Yeah, but you don't have to do too much with that if you don't want to, and you're still getting a pretty good phone. But I love what nothing has done with their OS, and I really like the fact that they've kept it to a point where they didn't complicate it too much. It's got its own aesthetic. You know, it's got kind of that 90s, late 80s dot matrix aesthetic that you have to be okay with, which if you are, I, I think is beautiful. I love the fact, this is one of my favorite just home screens on any device. I love the fact that I have plenty of room. I love the little weather widget. I love the different things with the time and the date that they have up here. I love the fact that I could get some of that material use stuff in there as well with the icons. I have settings up here, Play Store, photos that I usually don't keep on a home screen, but I can here because I think it looks nice on the Nothing phones. So there's a lot of things there that I think work well. And that's to me an overall good experience, better than something like the OnePlus 11. I think just Oxygen OS is just a little too complicated for its own good. It's a little too messy. I, I don't think they do as well with it as Samsung does with One UI. So if you're gonna if you're gonna really kind of put your stamp on your version of Android, you better make it good. And I think that Oxygen OS still has a couple things to iron out. It's gotten a lot better, but it's nothing like the Nothing OS so far to me, just keeping clean. Here's why. Battery life, fantastic. Absolutely great. Eight hours plus of screen on time if I wanted to push it, which is a hallmark of devices that have been in this $499, $599 area and price range is a fantastic battery life. So you get that extended battery life. You're not going to give up too much on power. The Snapdragon 8 Plus Gen 1 is still phenomenal. In fact, like every single device that has had this chip in it has been great on battery life. I don't know what it is, but it's just something about that device that they really honed in and did a, or something about that chipset that they really honed in and did a great job in terms of battery life. So I love, it's refreshing to be on a device that I don't have to worry about what the battery life is going to be because I know it's going to be phenomenal. It's something it's like a warm blanket, something about that. Performance is going to be exactly what you'd expect it to be. You're not going to have an issue anywhere down the line. You're going to be smooth on Twitter. You're going to be smooth on Instagram. You're going to be smooth, smooth with most gaming. I understand future-proofing-wise, it's not going to have the ray tracing. It's not going to have the enhanced gaming stuff of a Gen 2 Snapdragon-type device. I get that. But if you're not somebody that concerned with it, if you're just looking for a phone that you don't necessarily do a lot of intensive game on, you're not doing, like, console replacement gaming on down the line, then the Nothing Phone 2 for the money is great. Then there's the design. I like the aesthetic of it. I, I like the glyph stuff. I like the charging little bit there. I like the fact that I can know whether I, I have a WhatsApp notification because I have that set to kind of my always on glyph up here. If I have a WhatsApp, this is lit until I get rid of the notification, which I happen to like. I think that's good. So no matter where it is, if it's even if it's down on a table, I can kind of see that reflection or if I'm having it in my lap or something, I can see that reflection and know that's a notification that I want to take care of. So it does have some useful so that usefulness there. I love notification LEDs. I usually like them on the front, but I understand if time goes on. Not, uh, not a lot of bezel on these devices, not a lot of places to put them. So that's something that they, they shy away from. But you still get that, plus a little pop of color if you take video that does go on like a recording light. Let's look at that change log because I've talked a lot about it. This is what I was talking about when I was saying that they really go into detail on what they're doing and why. And you can just see the entire thing. Reduce dull tones when shooting in HDR. Resolve the halo issue effect in portrait mode when shooting in HDR. Implemented a new feature to shut down apps when the device reaches temperature. It goes on and on and on. In fact, it, yeah, go this way. And there's the second page of it. It's just a really in-depth look at what they're doing each month when they update something. They're not shy about updating it. They're not shy about telling you when there's a problem. There's bugs here. They've resolved an issue causing tap to wake to be unresponsive at times. They're not shy about admitting when there was a problem with the system and then fixing it. I like that. I like that transparency. I like what they've done. I, I like the overall ecosystem so far and Nothing OS is a big part of that. So if you're just looking for something different, if you're looking for just a nice, clean install of Android, you don't like uh, Oxygen OS, you don't trust OnePlus' software for whatever reason or what direction they're going to go into, personally, I can't blame you. They've been back and forth with Oxygen OS for a few years now. So if you're just looking at something that's well-supported, runs well, performance is good, then the Nothing Phone 2, to me, 
after a month so far is pretty good. If you've made it this far, like, comment, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Until next time, have that Steve Delicious day.